reality, my mentality, everything changes so rapidly, and I'm ready for the never ending fire, dancing with my deepest dark desires, miracles, how empirical, don't know anything quite hysterical, everything around me transpires, as I fulfill my darkest desires. Yo, what's up guys? Ample7 here, and today I'm going to play a video, and in this video I'm going to be doing a fin another FNAF theory. And this one is going to be about what the psychic friend Fredbear plushie is. And it's also going to be about Shadow Bonnie because of some of the research I was doing for this video. Uh, I, I realized something actually really interesting, and I, and I think I've solved, well, not completely, but I think I've solved qu quite a bit of Shadow Bonnie. I might have gotten some things wrong, might have gotten everything wrong, but hey, it's all just a theory. Okay, so people have debated about the identity of the Fredbear plush since FNAF 4 came out. Some people think it's the puppet, some people think it's Golden Freddy, just a hallucination, an imaginary friend, and, or that it's just William. But which one is the correct answer? Well, I believe it's actually that last one. The Fredbear plushie is just William Afton speaking through it to spy on the crying child and make sure he doesn't go near the animatronics. That's why he goes toward the stage. Fredbear plush stop that's why when he goes to this towards the stage Fredbear plush stops him don't you remember what you saw how does the Fredbear plush even know that he saw anything that's why people call him psychic friend Fredbear but like William knows he saw something whether it's because of something he did or or, or whatever um we don't know for sure but I have a theory on that I'll talk about it later maybe he just told him or something um in the real Jake, Evan, Jake's dad, that is, not me, is a soldier, and he has a doll in in the cabinet in Jake's room. He speaks through it while he's overseas, speaks to his son. He installs a voice changer so he sounds like a child. Evan is Jake's father, and Jake is a parallel to the crying child. Evan, Jake's dad, has a brother named Michael, and, uh, and this... Means he's technically a parallel to the crying child, but he also represents William. So that proves that the Frederick plushie is just a plushie with a William speaking and watching through. Also, keep in mind that after Crying Child dies, William brings the Fredbear plushie underground to Circus Babies Entertainment and Reynolds. And we know that the Fredbear plushie is connected to the cameras and in Michael's bedroom because of what he did to Crying Child. So he's trying to make sure he doesn't leave, or maybe he's just spying on him just because. Not the event. These aren't the events of FNAF 4, but these are just to watch him. In the private room of this location, <coughs> Fred Papushi has something laying on him. Uh, some people believe it's a camera controller, but I think it's what William used to talk through the plushie, like kind of like a walkie-talkie. People also believe that it just teleports, but I think it's just a crying child carries it around. Uh, but Scott wasn't sure how to animate animate that without making it look stupid. One more piece of evidence for the Fredbear plushie being William Afton is something Emperor Krakoa told me. In Ultimate Custom Night, the Toy Chica cutscenes are obviously representative of William's murders, and in the final cutscene, she says the line, Tomorrow is another day. This is the same line said at the end of most of the FNAF 4 minigames by the Fredbear plushie. So yeah, <clears throat> we've just, we've established that the Fredbear plushie is just William talking through it. There's also so, some evidence in the cliffs, but that, uh, that evidence is similar to the real Jake. Some people believe Jake and also Tyler from the Cliffs aren't crying child parallels, but more so Charlie parallels because the dads, Evan and Robert, are loving fa fathers kind of like Henry. People say the toys they are given represent Theodore rather than the Frederick plushie, but this is not true. First of all, there's no evidence that Theodore even existed in the games, and even if even if he did, that's it's not even an important character. Charlie doesn't need an origin story. We know everything about Charlie. We don't need to know every single thing about her backstory. And so Scott wouldn't do this. And Theodore, even if he did exist in, in the main universe, he's not an important character. <clears throat> and second, there are a lot more parallels between Crying Child and Jake that, than just the plushie that speaks to him. These parallels were sent to me uh, again by Emperor Kakoa. And uh, I'll talk about these details here. Number one, both of them died because of something related to their brains. With Jake, it was a tumor, and with Crying Child, it was a bite. Different, but s both still head injuries. <clears throat> Number two, both of them live in a type of house called a bungalow. We see a bungalow on the FNAF 4 title screen and Midnight Motorist, and Jake lives in one as well. So, Jake and Crying Child both live in a bungalow, the same type of house. 
with his number four, or three, I mean, with his best friend, Jake wanted to break out of his house through the window. This directly parallels Mid Midnight Motorist. Crying Child sees an animatronic and is lured away by it. And since there are no footprints leading up to the window, but only at the window, it's as if they appeared out of thin air, like if they were a shadow animatronic. There is some, hu some evidence to suggest that the puppet is Shadow Bonnie, such as something huge, and I'll talk about it in a second. Um, and that's what I'll be talking about, about Shadow Bonnie later on. And since their parents are friends, it would make sense for Crying Child and Charlie to be friends. So, Crying Child leaves through his window with his friend, Shadow Bonnie, aka Charlie, and Jake tries to leave through the window with his friend, Brandon. Number four. Jake has no idea what Simon is, which kind of connects back to Crying Child not knowing what the Frederick plushie is. They, he just talks to him, you know? He has no idea what he is. Number five. Jake has an IV and pills in his room next to his bed, just like the Easter eggs in FNAF 4. Yes, we do play as Michael in FNAF 4. A lot of people disagree for some reason, but, like, I made a video on that yesterday. Um, do check that out. Actually, today I'm recording this. I recorded it and uploaded it today. But, hey, this is going out tomorrow, so, yeah. Uh, um... But I also believe it's Crying Child torturing him for what he did. What he did to him. Go check out that video, by the way, and it's link in the description. And it would make sense for him to show him, like, because of M Michael, he needed the pills and IV. Like, he required the pills and IV because of what Michael did to him. You get what I mean? There's a lot more than just that, but I don't want to waste too much more time on this because this is not the focus of this video. <clears throat> so yeah, the Fred Red Plushie is just William watching his son. You think that's it? <laughs> no. No, not at all. In the post Night 6 minigame of FNAF 4, we see that the Fredbear plushie's text color is a slightly different hue. That means that this is a different entity. Who is it though? The puppet. Well, why, you may ask? Because in FNAF World, we see that an entity is telling us what to do to help Crying Child be put back together. And the Fredbear plushie is the one who said he will put Crying Child back together. So, the entity in FNAF World is the Fredbear plush, and who else would even care to do this besides the puppet? You could say William, but it can't be William because he is the Fredbear plushie previously, and this is obviously a different entity because of the different text color. And that entity from the post Night 6 minigame is the spirit in FNAF World. It also can't be Michael as he didn't have the power to spiritually bring, put his, his brother back together. And the way Crying Child is put back together is obviously spiritual because like, have you seen FNAF World? There is one other thing that suggests this is the puppet, and this is actually really huge and it ties into Shadow Bonnie. At the end of the real Jake, right before Jake dies, Margie hears voices coming from his room. This parallels the post Night 6 minigame, but we never got a clear answer as to who these voices were. I thought this could be Shadow Bonnie since in FNAF AR, when we are collecting Dark Remnant, the one place Shadow Bonnie appears in that game, we hear voices, whispers, just like the ones Margie hears, and when she gets too close to the room, they stop. And so yeah, I believed that this was Shadow Bonnie uh, making these whispers, at least in some way. And guess what? Based on the evidence that I've come by, I wasn't wrong. Let's fast forward to the Stitch Wraith epilogue number 7. Inside the forklift, there is a bag. Larson, when around it, hears voices, whispers like, th whispers like the ones Margie hears, and when he opens the bag, the voices stop, just like how when Margie got close to Jake's room, the voices stop, just like here. Here, inside the bag, is the puppet. The puppet makes the same whispery sounds as Shadow Bonnie. This proves that to at least a certain extent, the puppet is Shadow Bonnie, and it also means that the puppet is the one who was in Jake's room the night before he died, and that means for certain that the Fredbear plushie in the post Night 6 minigame of FNAF 4 is the puppet, and this also means for 100% certain that Jake is not a parallel to Charlie. Suck on that BV5 and Mike Victim believers. If you believe those theories, I'm sorry, but seriously try to deny this and you will fail. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to offend you, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry, very, very, very sorry. <clears throat> so, here's what I believe happened with Charlie. I think Shadow Bonnie was the first form Charlie ever took after she died, and she took this form before she even realized she was dead. It could be a similar situation to coming home, where she doesn't know yet that she's actually dead and only learns later on. It could possibly be that she was just trying to be with her friend again, not knowing that she was really just scaring him. I, It could also, it could also be a, a similar situation to hide and seek. She follows him around as Shadow Bonnie, really just trying to have fun with her friend, 
but he's getting scared by this. Maybe that Nightmare Freddy line from Ultimate Custom Night. I have always lived in your shadow. Maybe that line was really spoken from the spirit of the puppet. And not towards Cassidy, not towards William, but towards BV. And this is it possible that... BV, by the way, cr uh, crying child, bite victim. Is it possible, this part I'm less sure of, but it's still possible, that she is upset at him for rejecting her spirit, like her as Shadow Bonnie. He's scared of her. He's rejecting her. And maybe that is what the crying child saw. What the Fred Plushie said, he saw. He was scared of what he saw. Shadow Bonnie. Remember this line? What is seen in shadows is easily misunderstood in the mind of of a child so guys that's my uh, video for today this is my theory the crying child what about the crying child no shadow bonnie is the puppet and the puppet is charlie and the the pu shadow bonnie is not evil um basically that's the gist of it right that's all for this video the Fredbear plushie in the first main days of FNAF 4 is William speaking through the plushie to watch his son. And in the post-96 minigame, it's the puppet. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Impulse 7 out and peace.